morning. Welcome to the February mid-month book bash vlog. Uh, I am back from the library, which you will have seen the footage of me going to the library this morning. So I thought I would start off this vlog with my little library book haul. Um, and I guess I should explain what mid-month book bash is for those of you who are new to the channel. So this is a monthly reading event that I take part in. It was first conceived of by Doris over at Aldi Books. And it's basically a chance for us to jumpstart our reading, get it going, um, to try to meet some of our goals for the month, because instead of waiting until the end of the month to try to rush everything in, which I still do anyway, but I do enjoy my mid-month my mid-month book bash vlog. So it starts on the Friday and ends on a Monday. So today is Friday, February 9th, and it will end on Monday, February 12th. And we just try to read as much as we can over the weekend. Of course, this is Super Bowl weekend. I do host a Super Bowl party, so that's going to be an issue. Um, and I am also hosting a birthday party tomorrow night for my daughter-in-law. So lots of events going on. Today I am not working, um, so that's good. That gives me today. I've already had, you know, basically spent the morning running errands, um, but that's fine. Some of them were bookish in nature, so it's always fun. And um, tomorrow I have to get my hair done. So that's another thing that's going to take time out. And Monday I have to work. So we, I don't know how much reading is going to get done this weekend. But let's talk about what I got out of the library. I went to pick up two books that had come in for me that I had placed on hold. And they are both for the BookTube Prize. I am judging the nonfiction round A. Or ju judging in nonfiction for the Octofinals round. I am in group A. So I got Monsters. A Fan's Dilemma by Claire Detterer. That's one. I'm doing nonfiction, obviously. Um, I got Cosmic Scholar, the filmmaker, folklorist, and mystic who transformed American art, The Life and Times of Harry Smith by John Swezd. Swezd? Swed? Swed? I'm not sure how you say that, so reading that. And then previously, not today, but previously I got from my library, King, A Life by Jonathan Eig biography um huge ones been everywhere lately so those three are all in my group for the book two prize which i haven't started any of those yet <laughs> um also while i was at the library though they are doing uh, obviously always fundraising so i got this little uh sticker of the library and then this little uh bumper sticker for the library and this bookmark and I also bought a book off there. They have shelves in the entryway where they sell books for donations um, that have been donated. And I got this nonfiction, Prisoners of Geography, 10 Maps That Tell You Everything You Need to Know About Global Politics by Tim Marshall. And it looks like it never has been read. It looks in brand new, pristine condition. I paid a dollar for it. So um, I've never read anything by Tim Marshall to my knowledge, but I've wanted to try something by him. So I was glad to find this. And also, I think this book was purchased maybe in, I'm not really sure, I'm going to say Germany, <laughs> this was purchased. Uh, so not sure how that arrived in my little library, but I'm glad that it did. And also that it has like double page maps. I feel, I definitely feel this is a European paper paperback edition because it's got that feel of a European paperback. So glad to have that. So none of those things are what I'm reading this weekend. So I just wanted to show you what I got at the library. So let's talk about what I will be reading this weekend. I have five books that I'm currently reading and they are all buddy reads. So the very first one is another book from the library, um, but I have been reading this one <clears throat> for the last week. This is Husband, I'm sorry. This is Master Slave, Husband, Wife, An Epic Journey from Slavery to Freedom by e Ilion Wu. Um, buddy reading this with Doris and Patrice and Karen from Run Right Reads. I will also say that Patrice now has an active booktube channel. It's called Two Minutes for Books or something like that. I will link it down below. You should all go check her out. She does short videos, two minutes or less, talking about books and they're fabulous. So definitely go check out Patrice and show her some love and subscribe to her channel because she deserves more viewership. Um, but we're reading this one for Black History Month. It's the very um, page-turning story of this couple who um, escaped from slavery uh, by the wife passing as 
a white young man, man who has this man as a slave. And it is unbelievable. It does such a good job of providing contextual history within the sort of adventure story of these people escaping from slavery. It is fabulous. And um, I'm about, I'm on page 128 of this one. So I'll be reading this one this weekend. Uh, I need to finish up my section so I can check in with my buddies. I am also reading The World Turned Upside Down, A History of the Chinese Cultural Revolution by Yang Zhisheng. This is translated from the Chinese by Stacy Mosher and Gao John. And I was reading this in the last Mid-Month Book Bash. You can see that I have been tabbing it up like crazy. We're reading, Joe and I, I'm reading this with Joe Smith, by the way. We will be reading the last three chapters and checking in at the end of the weekend. So this one I'm hoping to finish this weekend. Um, it is a, a just a, a tremendously large nonfiction account of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Very detailed and very informative. I am also reading The Fish That Ate the Whale, The Life and Times of America's Banana King by Rich Cohen. I'm buddy reading this one with Rachel and um, uh, tabbing this one up as well. I have a check-in with Rachel today on the third part of this book. It's div divided into four parts. Be checking in on the third part and then reading the last part for check-in on Sunday. So we'll be finishing this one up as well this weekend. This is about the man Sam Zamuri who was the um, head of United Fruit and the one of the major players behind the creation and um, like expansion of the banana industry in the United States. Fascinating, fascinating story. And then I am buddy reading this mystery novel, Deception on His Mind by Elizabeth George. I'm buddy reading this with Britta Buller. And I will be checking in on um, the last section of this today. And I've already read that, so I'm actually... <laughs> where I need to be on this one and looking forward to continuing on. This is a mystery that takes place um, on the Essex coast in England. Um, it does not so far follow our dis inspect uh, detective Lindley, who is normally the main character of these this particular mystery series. Instead, it's his partner, Barbara Havers, who is leading the investigation because Lindley is off on his honeymoon. So um, yeah, this one is really good. And um, just Elizabeth George writes the most complex mysteries and they're so good. So be, fin be comp not finishing that one, but continuing on with that one. And then similarly, I am reading The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien with Doris and Kim from Middle of the Book March. And um, we just checked in on the first seven chapters of this fantasy novel. Uh, this is a reread for me, uh, like a many, 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 many times reread for me. Um, so I will be reading on, we're reading like a chapter a day and doing one check in a week. So I won't be finishing this this weekend, but I will be um, continuing on in it. I'm just absolutely adoring the reread as per usual. I generally have, I, I mean, I don't even know how many times I've read this series at this point in my life. Um, but this is the first time reading in these movie tie-in editions. So just something different trying out um, this time, but absolutely loving the experience as always. So that's what I'll be working on this weekend. Hope to finish two of those out of the stack of five. Um, and yeah, and I, I will be, I am supposed to be starting another book too, um, this weekend. So if I do start that one this weekend, I will tell you about it when I do that.
and it has been um, two days, so it is Monday, February 12th, and this hasn't been a very bookish mid-month book bash, which I was afraid was going to happen, but I did manage to finish two of the books that I was trying to get through on my currently reading pile. So the first one that I finished was uh, The Fish That Ate the Whale, The Life and Times of America's Banana King by Rich Cohen. This is nonfiction that I was buddy reading with Rachel, and this tells a story of Sam... Um, Zamuri, who was an individual who immigrated to the United States in the late 1800s from Russia. He was uh, Jewish and he arrived in this country penniless as a young man, a teenager basically, and um, got himself down to New Orleans and observed uh, fruit peddlers who would meet boats in the harbor fill their carts up with bananas from those boats and push them around the city and um, sell the bananas. And from this observation, he built a business of selling um, bananas to markets that had not yet been exploited. And then he built up his own fleet of ships and basically started this huge international corporation um, that eventually merged with a company called United Fruit, which was a big uh, company that was doing nefarious things in Latin America in the mid 20th century, early 20th century to mid 20th century. And Sam Zamuri was involved in all of that. And he was a larger than life character. He was um, like basically the last of what was termed the banana cowboys. So cowboys, you have this idea of in Western United States, cowboys riding the range and living free and sort of like, independent and conquering new frontiers and all that sort of thing. And Sam Zamuri was doing the same thing in Latin America, um, but basically stealing natural resources, exploiting local labor, all that kind of thing. So it was very interesting, first of all, to read about the um, creation of the industry to sell bananas to the United States from these Latin American countries, because bananas don't grow in the United States. Well, the, the plant can grow in the United States, but doesn't produce bananas. So um, that was all very interesting. The biology behind all of that was fascinating. The creation of this business to um, bring bananas to the United States and make them be a ubiquitous uh, product that normal everyday Americans would reach for. That was all very interesting, but this book was written in a very, very odd style. Its narrative flow is doesn't flow. <laughs> it's very staccato. Um, it's The tone is very strange. It's unclear whether the author, Rich Cohen, thinks Zamuri was a hero or a villain, um, maybe a little bit of both. And it just was very distracting to try to read this book. So information good, style, very poor. Um, I was really glad that I buddy read this because the conversation around the information in this book was excellent. Um, but I, it's, it just, you know, if you get your hands on a copy of this for a low price or free from your library, because you're interested in the history of how um, corporate America has exploited Latin America and how um, complicit the United States government is in that, is in that, whole process. This is a very interesting book, but don't read it for um, the language because you will be disappointed. <laughs> and then the next book that, that I completed was this nonfiction, The World Turned Upside Down, A History of the Chinese Cultural Rev Revolution. So I was buddy reading this one with Joe Smith and I've been buddy reading with, with her for the last five weeks. You can see we've been uh, really intensely studying this book. Like we put a lot of time and effort <laughs> into this book, reading three chapters at a time and discussing them thoroughly. And I am so thankful to her for like holding my hand and, and us working through this together. Um, and it was a really excellent experience to buddy read this with her. Um, this book is extremely comprehensive. It's very detailed. It covers the time period of Mao Zedong taking control of the government of China and um, instituting the Cultural Revolution. So basically the mid 60s through his death um, in the mid to late 70s. Uh, I can't remember exactly when he died. I think it was like 1976 maybe. Um, and it was a terrible time period in China's history in terms of the death and destruction that was handed out to the citizens of that country um, but it was just bizarre to read about the the 
the reversals of opinion and who was um who were the winners and who were the losers changed like on a monthly basis um I changed all the time as uh Mao's whims changed um in one minute he would support the rebels and be egging them on to um rebel and to um you know basically create a revolution within the country and bring down the bring down the bourgeoisie and then like things would spiral to the point where he would feel out of control and then he would have the bureaucracy crack down on those rebels and so you might be in the group that was um sort of the popular group in terms of whether you had Mao support or not um and then a couple weeks later you would be being denounced and thrown in jail or abused tortured um just incredible amounts of pain and suffering inflicted upon people during this time period um and it really set the whole country of China back in terms of economic and cultural development um really awful stuff but the book was written in in a way that um, there were points where you just had to laugh at the, how ludicrous it all was. So I feel like I learned a great deal from this book. Um, it really helped solidify this time period in my mind. Um, I kind of wish I had read this one first and then read Do Not Say We Had Nothing by Madeline Tian because I think I would have got a lot more out of that novel had I had this information in my brain first. Um, I would say if you are interested in the history of the Chinese Cultural Revolution, um, this you're probably not going to get anything more thorough than this. Plus, it's written by a Chinese citizen. So I think that's important. Um, plus, he lived through it like he has not very often, but every once in a while, he will share a personal anecdote for like being in some of these places when historical events happened, which was fascinating. Um, so yeah, uh, very dense, very detailed. I ended up listening to it on audiobook while I read it with my eyes. And for me, that was the best, uh, the best way to do it because there's so many names of people, like every single person I think that was anyway involved in the Chinese Cultural Revolution um, was named in this book. And I just had a very difficult time keeping them all apart. But listening to the narrator um, pronounce all the names really helped me from getting bogged down in that part of the story. So yeah, this is a book that I would say is quite difficult. Um, but if it's something that you really want to learn uh, the history behind uh, an event, and you want to learn it from a person who was there and um, continues to live in China, I think that you couldn't ask for a better book than this one. So yeah, I'm really glad that I read this one. And I thank Joe for taking that ride with me. Um, another book that I started and I don't believe I talked about in my uh, currently reading rundown on Friday is a book that I started uh, this weekend and it is a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac and that is um, The Council of the Dolls by Mona Susan Power and this is a book historical fiction um, about indigenous women and the role that dolls played in their lives. So this is fiction and it is sort of split up into several different narratives in different historical time periods. And so we've just read the first section about the first 65 pages. And in this part of the storyline, we're following a young girl named Sissy. She lives with her mom and, a, and her dad in Chicago in the 1970s. And her mom is carrying a lot of issues with her from her time in residential school. Sissy has a little doll, a dark skin doll, and that doll plays a pretty central role in some of the events that happen during the course of Sissy telling her story. And Sissy being a young child, um, she narrates what she observes happening like between her parents and amongst the adults that she is surrounded by, but she doesn't have a full understanding of what is happening so she describes those things like in terms that she can understand like um, when her mother gets angry she describes her mother's eyes as turning red and her acting like a monster kind of a thing um and that's because she's trying to make sense of her world right and i just think it's so well done the characterization is excellent the description of these women there's sissy the young child her mom and the mother's mother, so like three generations and how they're all interacting together and the different experiences that they've had. And we're just starting to get into their stories. 
um, and what life was like to live as a person of color in Chicago in the 70s um, as an indigenous person. And yeah, fantastic. Just really great storytelling. I'm listening to it on audiobook and the narrator is Isabella Starr LeBlanc and um, it's very fabulously narrated. So I would definitely recommend that. I really hope the rest of the book continues as well as it started. So that's what I've been able to accomplish. We did have our Super Bowl party last night um, and that was fun. And um, the food was fabulous, like probably the best food we've ever had at a Super Bowl party. And we've been having Super Bowl parties uh, for 25 years <laughs> at our house. So yeah, it was really fantastic. And um, everybody had a good time and Taylor's team won. And so some people were glad about that and some people were not, and that was really fun. And uh, yeah, we just had a good time. So that's been my mid-month book bash. I hope that you've all had an opportunity to get some extra reading done over the course of the weekend. Um, I hope that you're all doing well and I will talk to you soon.